Right. Hey everyone, you know me, Austin Summer here covering the EIWA and Ivy League with Intermat. I am here with the new associate head coach, Matt Valenti of Penn. Coach Valenti, thanks for joining me. How you feeling? Feeling great. Feeling great. Uh, just walked out of a workout, so a little tired. These guys are beating me up, but it's awesome and glad to be back on the mat and appreciate you taking the time to chat with me. I appreciate you got a nice little warm up in physical and mental warm up. You know, got a broken mental sweat, as you know, White Gooden would say. Appreciate that. Um, yeah, first thing I want to get into is at Penn, you were the all time wins leader, two time NCAA champ, right? Now you're in transition to be the head coach at your alma mater. You know, that's got to feel pretty good, right? You know, what are your feelings on that? Yeah, honestly, I, I'm just incredibly excited. Um, this program has meant so much to me through the years. Uh, obviously spent a, a good chunk of time here coaching even after college got to see this program through a lot of ups and downs over the last two decades essentially since I first stepped on campus here um, and I think we're in a position where we're clearly on an upward trajectory right now and you know my role stepping in here is just I view it as an opportunity to help us continue on that path and to really kind of figure out how we break through to that next level and what that looks like for our program. Yeah, a little bit of a unique situation here with you stepping in as the associate head coach, which you're going to be kind of sharing that role with Coach Brian Pearsall right now. Mm -hmm. um, so talk until you take over in 2026, right? So give us a little bit of feedback on how does that work splitting with him and, you know, how how's your role going to increase, you know, from here on out? Yeah, that's a great question. And, and um, you know, I've been fortunate already stepping in here that both Coach Reyna and Coach Pierce all have embraced me stepping in. You know, this obviously isn't a normal transition in the world of college athletics in general. Um, so there always is the chance that there can be all kinds of dynamics that go awry. Um, they've been awesome work to, for me to work with so far. They've embraced me coming back into this role. Um, you know, Brian and I, have, I feel like we're, we're building a good rapport. We've got a ways to go to kind of feel comfortable with kind of how things work, but um, you know, the way that I think about how I do my work in general applies to what I'm bringing over to this wrestling side now of like, you know, there's there's nothing that's built here by one person. Nobody is ever a singular figurehead who's just going to, you know, create this program out of just their own mind. Right. It's collective effort and collective commitment of a bunch of people. Um, when we think about the coaching staff, Brian and Roger have spent a ton of time getting this program to where it is today. Um, the other assistant position has been a little bit of a, a tough one for these guys because it's just transitioned. We've had incredible people in this role, but we really haven't a hadn't had a ton of continuity in coaching in terms of our coaching staff over the last few years. Um, and I think the three of us kind of working together along with Kevin McGuigan as our director of ops, you know, I think we're doing a great job of trying to figure out how do we come become more efficient? How do we work well together? What does that look like going forward so that we can help elevate ourselves, elevate the staff and elevate the program? And, you know, we're actively exploring that. And I think I'm a willing partner in understanding that. I also am comfortable in my own skin. Like I, I don't know what I don't know. I've been out of coaching for a minute or two. Um, so, you know, getting back up to speed, understanding the recruiting landscape, understanding where our program's at from, you know, the detailed perspective, like, I don't know these things. I don't walk in pretending that I know these things. And I defer to those guys to help me understand where we are. And I've been spending a lot of time just listening and understanding and uh, figuring out where I can step in and help these guys to help them elevate the program as well. Yeah, I feel Penn is one of the best, if not the best at kind of keeping, for lack of a better, coaching in-house. You know, like you said, Pearsall and Raina have been there for a long time. Mark Hall has been there since he's joined the PRTC and, you know, that fourth position sometimes, you know, uh, like you just got Tyler Berger, PRTC athlete in there as your volunteer, right? So mm -hmm. anytime a position opens up, it seems to be very, you know, con continuing that path down of having someone close to Penn fill that role, you know? So I guess I kind of build up to my next question is when you do take over, mm -hmm. um, it's pretty safe to assume we're going to keep going on that same path, um, but you're going to be in charge, right? How much are you going to deviate off that? How much do you plan on tweaking things or is it just going to be keep going steep, full steam ahead? Yeah, it's a great question. Um, and honestly, this is where this announcement that we made of this transition plan really comes into play. Um, yeah. So what the specific logistics of how this is going to work for us right now, I'm an associate head coach alongside Brian. 
Um, next year, I'll actually move into the head coach role. Coach Raina will move into head coach emeritus title, which is kind of TBD on exactly what that means. So we got to figure that out. Um, you know, Brian will say in the associate head coach role, we'll obviously have another position that we likely need to fill depending on where Mark Hall is. Um, but part of what I'm thinking about is, you know, 2026 is when I officially step into that role and I take over the program. It's a bit of like, for me, if it ain't broke, don't fix it. Right. But I also want to tweak and adjust where I feel like tweaking and adjusting can help us. Uh, so right now I'm really in like a, a sit back, listen, absorb, understand, kind of analyze where we are and think about if I'm going to make changes, where and how, and what does that look like? Um, you know, there obviously are small technical things that I'll bring to the table that might be different now, but in terms of overarching vision for the program, like I don't see us going from, we're going to go this way. And all of a sudden I'm like, eh, stop that. We're going to throw that out the door and we're going to go the other way. Like we're on a good path. I don't yeah. want to take us off that path. I want to figure out one, how we accelerate our route up that path and two, how we just continue to climb and continue to climb. And, you know, we have some big goals out ahead of us. Um, we can't assume that the path we're on is always going to be the clearest, straightest path to that. we got to figure out how we navigate whatever steps come up. And in our landscape, things are changing on a daily basis. So we got to figure out how we keep up with those around us. But, you know, our arch rivals up north in the tundra of Ithaca, like they had a heck of a tournament at the NCAA championships this year. They finished second in the NCAA. Like, that's where we want to be. And that's our goal. And we're chasing those guys down. And that's a lofty goal. And they put a ton of work and time and coach gray up there is doing some awesome stuff, but you know, we want to run them down. We want to make sure that we're competing for Ivy titles. And then you know, if we're doing that, that means we're competing for trophies at the NCAA championships, how we get there. We're on track right now. The question is how do I adjust and tweak, you know, TBD on what that looks like exactly. But I'm very fortunate. I consider myself very fortunate that I get to learn from the inside out and I don't come in and have to like guess well, we were maybe doing this and this may have been working or maybe not. Like I'm going to get to figure that out along the way. And hopefully this just becomes a seamless transition from the vision that we currently have to the slightly adjusted vision of where I would like to take things in the future. Yeah. It's interesting too, just because like you kind of mentioned, you've been out of coaching for a while, you know, you've, you were at Columbia for a little bit. Um, mm -hmm. After you graduated, you spent five or six years at Penn. Um, and then in 2015, you kind of took another, role outside of coaching, you know, in the athletic department there at Penn. Um, how was that like leaving the sport, first of all, and then second of all, you know, was, did you always plan to come back coaching and how did this opportunity arise? You know, what, did someone approach you or did you kind of throw your hat in the ring? Like, Hey, I'm interested in this job once coach trainer retires here. Yeah. So um, in 2015, well, actually let me rewind a little bit back uh, post Olympic cycle in 2012, I, I had started a master's up at Columbia when I was up at Columbia, I gave that up to move back to Philly to train. I was training it and coaching. So I was coaching at Penn and actually commuting up to Lehigh to train at Lehigh as part of, uh, what was then LVAC since become LV LVWC, yep. um, 2012 Olympic trials came and went. obviously didn't make the team. And then it was kind of a pivot of like, okay, what's next for me? Decided to go back and finish my master's that I started at Columbia. I actually finished it at Drexel. So I'm a Drexel alum. Right. Um, got my master's in sport management. At the same time that I started the master's, our deputy athletic director at the time asked me if I'd be willing to help out with some administrative work. They had somebody leave. They had a gap. They needed somebody to cover some work. It was just a part-time thing. Not even part-time. It was like a temporary thing. Um I think I did all right. She asked me in 2015 if I would consider moving over full time. At that point in my six years of coaching, we'd had two different head coaches here at Penn. It was a really rough experience for me, candidly, as an assistant coach. And I was like, you know what? I need to try something else. And I got in the administration. They hired me full time. Um, I was actually around the program quite a bit from like 15 through probably 18 uh, because we had a ton of transition. We had a coach leave. We brought in Roger. We were without coaches for a period of time. So I actually was like in and out of the room a decent amount. Um, we had our PRTC guys as coach. I was in Rich Perry's corner when he's, you know, Russ and Kyle Dake at trials. So like was still connected over time, kind of shifted away from that a little bit more. They had a good thing going. I didn't want to impose myself in any way. Um, ironically, that was actually when I stepped into the NCAA wrestling rules committee. 
So I was very much in the thick of the rules side of things. Um, COVID hit, obviously that slop fest of all COVID and everything post COVID. Post COVID, you know, I, I transitioned to um, overseeing wrestling as one of my responsibilities. So ironically, I was Roger's boss. Um, I was a supervisor for wrestling from 2018 through three weeks ago, four weeks ago. Um, so I worked closely with the program. Um, so I've always been connected, but obviously not as involved. Um, going into Roger's uh, most recent contract, we had a lot of discussion kind of about just where is he, what's he thinking long term, you know, how is he feeling? And then obviously he had his accident last year. And it really kind of ramped up the conversations of what does the future of this program look like? Um, so being the administrator in charge of the sport, obviously I started thinking about, okay, what is what is the right next step for this program? And we pulled a small group together to start thinking about that. And, you know, how do we go about that? And we had a lot of great options that we were thinking about. Um, and I actually had multiple people along the way ask me if I would consider it. And at that point in time, I was like, you know what? No, I'm on a great track in administration. I feel good about where I am. Like, you know, I have no complaints. And then, then the more I started to think about it, I was like, you know what? I kind of left coaching a little bit because I was like, not thrilled about where we were. I had a rough few years. I wanted to try something else. And I just had this like little niggling thing in my gut where I was just like, do I want to come back? And then it started to kind of steamroll a little bit. And then, you know, eventually we um, circled back to probably about eight months ago. It was the first time I got lunch with Coach Raina. And I was like, hey, what do you think about this? And he was like, yes. And I was like, <laughs> okay. No well, some, some support for this idea. And then it kind of picked up steam from there. And over the last few months, I think we've kind of worked through what that looks like. And I tease our AD. I was in a meeting with her at one point and we were kind of talking about transition planning and uh, kind of just like all the nuance of what this looks like. And she's like, you know, you'd probably be like the perfect person for this. And she said it like kind of flippantly, kind of joking. And I was like, <laughs> at that point, I was at like, I was at decision point of like, am I going to do this or am I not? And when she said that, I was like, all right, I'm in. And that's when we kind of started to put the wheels in motion. So it, it was like kind of a long, you know, winding path to get here. Um, I'll tell you that, you know, the last four weeks of being here, like, I have felt more energized than I think I've felt in a long time. And it's been really exciting just to spend time with our guys and get to know these guys. And um, we just have an incredible team and an awesome group of people around this program. Yeah. I mean, obviously you were involved with the program, like you stated, and every time I'm at a pen match, you're usually there front row, you know, help, you know, whether you're, you know, working or just there to spectate. Right. But mm -hmm. it seems like you always kind of been a fan. And I think because you're the transition is at Penn and not another school, I think mm -hmm. that kind of made the decision easier for you. You know, you, you, you wrestled here, you've been here for so long. It's an easier transition. You know, if an opportunity would have came up at another school, um, I don't want to speak for you, but I don't, I'm not sure if that transition would have been as easy for you to make. Completely agree. I, I think that would have been a much more difficult thing. And I mean, you look around the country right now and, you know, there's jobs open all over the place and everybody's just kind of like, well, well what, what happens now? Right. Yeah. And there's just this giant question mark over where do things go from here? Um, and for me, I think it was nice to know that like, I actually am allowed to have the time to learn and can transition to this in a way that like more than anything, it protects our guys. It protects our student athletes from the disruption that coaching changes normally bring. Um, and as somebody who in my administrative role hired and fired coaches, right. Very rarely do you see a new coach or a coaching transition where a new coach comes in, be very smooth. Right. And yeah. the people that suffer the most are student athletes at the end of the day, right? They have to relearn who it is they're going to work with. They have to relearn a vision, relearn a direction, relearn a philosophy. That's challenging. That's really challenging. And more often than not, you see a dip in form of how those programs end up doing. Um, that, and that's part of what makes it special is that like, you know, hopefully for these guys, the transition of what they feel is really minimal. And that way they're just kind of, not disrupted. They feel like they can continue on the path they're on. And really it's just continuing to focus on the goals ahead. Yeah, And the other part of that too, that I think I want to touch on too, is, you know, your alumni support, your fan base too, you know, just knowing that someone like you is stepping in and there's, you know, there's no butting heads. Everyone's kind of on the same page. Mm -hmm. I think that sits well with the fan base too, you know, because no matter what school is hiring, you know, any coach, it's, 
oh, I like him. Oh, I don't like him. Bad hire, good hire. You know, there's always that, you know, that, that battle between the the fan base. And mm. I'm pretty sure 99%, if not more, you know, are going to be on board with this hire, you know, so just have the fan base having your back as soon as you get in day one is probably beneficial for your end too. Yeah. I mean, I, I like to think so, but I'm not a hundred percent, you know, mm-hmm. not everybody loves me. I'm going to try and do the best I can, but you know, we'll, we'll see what we can do. My goal is to win everybody over no matter what. And hopefully we get there. Yeah. Yeah. We kind of talked a little bit about, you know, getting the alumni back in, you know, coach Rena had a lot part, to, a lot to do with that. Mm-hmm. Just revamping the program as a whole, like you mentioned, you know, really stepped up recruiting in the past half decade, mm-hmm. um, get the excitement for the alumni back and, you know, really getting that RTC, you know, that's, that's been a real big driver for you guys along with Drexel partnering with them. Um, you know, just give me a little background on coach Reina and the impact he had since he came back. What was that? Six years ago, seven years ago now. Funny. I was just trying to do that math the other day and <laughs> I think it was more than that. I think we're talking about 2017 when he came back so seven yeah, years seven, seven years seven eight years yeah so yeah, uh, short time he's been there it's been a pretty much an explosion of pen wrestling you know in, mm-hmm. in all different directions like i stated so mm-hmm. yeah give me you know what's the impact he's had on, on that? yeah i mean I, I think the results speak for themselves and they speak to the impact that he's had on this program right and and i'm not just talking about the results on the mat the results of what you see around the alumni community, the ecosystem of wrestling that we've built around here, right? The PRTC and the behemoth that that is right now. None of these things happen without Coach Rainham, right? And you look back to his first stint and what he did when he was here, the first time he was coaching, I mean, Penn had won like stretches of time of being Ivy League champs and breaking EIWA records and high level performance and national champions and Olympic champions. Right. And now only seven years in here, like we went from, I think we were finishing fourth and fifth in the Ivy league to we're going, we're splitting five, five with Cornell last year. And, you know, we got to get a couple of bonus points to be able to win that dual meet. We've qualified 29 guys for the NCAAs over the last three years, which is the 12th most of any team in the country. Right. And to do that over the period of time that he's been involved is actually pretty incredible when you take a step back and think about it. And that's just the results on the mat. Then you start thinking about the alums and the number of people engaged. And quite frankly, the amount of money that we're fundraising on an annual basis, like people don't give just on a whim. They give because they're excited about the vision that's being shared and what's put out in front of them. And uh, there's nobody better in the country at, rallying people to a cause than coach Reyna. And we wouldn't be where we are today without him. Um, and we wouldn't be on the path we're on without him. I mean, what he's done to this program has been quite frankly, transformative. Um, and that applies to the PRTC too. I mean, we, we run a peer, the RTC here that I think is, is first class and is built the right way and bringing coach Slay back to be a part of that, I think was an important piece of the puzzle. And coach Reyna was a huge part of that too. And, um, you know, it's it's been a tremendous lift, much of which he's taken on himself with Brian alongside. But I mean, they've really they've done a lot in the last few years to get us where we are today. Yeah, it just feels like, you know, Penn is like the big shiny object in the room. And, yeah, you got that all American and Composto. And it's just like you said, just so many qualifier after qualifier after qualifier, you know, and eventually that's going to lead to guys on the podium year after year, multiple guys on the podium year after year. Right. It's just, you're, like you said, we're on that path and transitioning up. And I, I think it's promising with everything that he's done there. And, you know, I think he's leaving, he's definitely leaving it better than when he came in. Right. And, you know, Absolutely. Kind of putting all the, not all the pressure on you, but you know, some of the pressure now that you're going to be the head guy there, um, yep. you know, so it got to be exciting and maybe a little nerve wracking for you too. Right. Yeah. Oh, it absolutely is. I mean, that's one of the biggest challenges of this job is anytime you follow a legend, the bar is set really dang high. Right. And, um, you know, I'm, I'm following an an epic legend in our sport in, in our world here at Penn. I mean, we're talking about a hall of fame level coach who has had an impact like none other in our history. Um, I mean, part of my job is to just not screw it up. Right. Like part of my job is to make sure we keep going the direction we're going and not screw it up, which, on the surface, sounds like it, it's easy, but it's not. And so really, I'm focused on on doing that and then figuring out how we elevate just a little bit. Because um, if we do that, I mean, I think the success that we have ahead of us with the foundation that Coach Reyna has kind of put in place here, we're, we're set up for some big things in the future. Yeah, another thing I wanted to throw at you here was, 
obviously Ivy leagues are kind of branching from the EIWA, right? Mm -hmm. You six guys. And I've seen people on forums call it the poison Ivy league, but I'm not going to go there. (laughs) Yeah. But, um, you know, what's your thoughts on, on that overall, you know, is that good for the sport, bad for the sport, you know, you can put your coaching hat on or your rules, your former rules committee hat, you know, Mm -hmm. whichever one, you know, overall thoughts on, on that. Yeah. Yeah. It's a great, it's a great question. Um, Throughout all of this, I will admit I've been quite conflicted. Um, Me too. Obviously, I came up wrestling in the EIWA. I've been a part of it. I know the history of the EIWA. My old office was underneath the gym where the first ever EIWA tournament, first ever collegiate tournament was hosted, right? So, like, the history of the EIWA, like, it runs through Penn, and we are a huge part of that. Um, At the same time, times change right? And things change and the qualification system changed and the landscape changed and the Ivy League schools are legitimate wrestling schools. Yeah. Like we are wrestling schools, all of us, all six of us, we are the real deal. Um, and the EWA and the transitions through the years and 17 schools being in that tournament, I just think the landscape shifted. And as much as I'm a traditionalist and I love the history of the EIWA, I think the timing was right. And I think the reality and the numbers, they they spoke for themselves. I think what's in the best interest of our guys in terms of national competitiveness was to have our own Ivy League tournament. All right. Reality, we qualified 30 plus guys for the NCAA tournament this year, which was almost half of all EIWA qualifiers coming from six schools. That means we're competing to just re-win our qualification spots against another 11 teams. Right. And that's, that was one of those things that I think once we saw that starting to happen, it was kind of eye opening of like, you know what, it might be the time now for us to do this. Um, It's still bittersweet. I was the administrator at the time. I had to send the official email to the EWA to like remove us from the EWA. And like, I sat there and just stared at it for probably a solid 24 hours before I sent it. Cause I didn't want to send it, but I knew I had to. Yeah. Um, but you know, we, I, I think it was the right thing for us. And honestly, I think long-term it's good for wrestling. Um, I think more conferences is not a bad thing for the national landscape either. Right. We don't know what's going to happen with the PAC 12 going forward. So who knows what the conference landscape is going to start looking like, who knows what the conferences are going to be tomorrow, right? That it changes constantly. Like there could be a new conference in three days for all we know, or teams could be out of the conferences they're in for us. Like it's a little bit of protectionism of, we know who we are. We're Ivy league schools. We're going to be able to compete within ourselves. We're also nationally competitive and we're going to continue to be going forward. And I think it sets us up as a league uh, for success long-term too. Yeah. I think you nailed it on the head there, but back in the day, IVs were just kind of, you know, athletics were kind of secondary. You're not as much on the forefront as they are now. Um, not just wrestling, but across the board in all sports, right? So I'm pretty sure every other sport has uh, the Ivy League, com- you know, conference championship, except wrestling, if if I'm not mistaken there. So, I mean, yeah, it only makes sense for you guys to join. But again, I'm also conflicted too, because it's like, I want to cover the IWA. I want the whole, all 17 teams, right? It's mm-hmm. just more depth. There's more, you know, there's more room for upsets in, in the tournament, bigger tournament, you know, just more possibilities, right? But but like you said, just the way Ivy, Ivies are performing now, they're they're not on the back burner anymore. They're in the forefront of the sport. Um, and I think that should be highlighted. And, you know, what's it going to take to get Dartmouth and Yale to reinstate their programs? I mean, <laughs> how much money are we talking? Billions, uh, trillions, right? <laughs> yeah. Yeah, yeah. Are you going to have some going to have to have some ADs that are wrestling friendly? That's what you need. Yeah. Money talks inevitably, but you got to have some wrestling friendly ADs at the end of the day. And that's one of the beautiful things about where we are right now is, you know, we have, we have an AD who loves wrestling and is a huge fan of us. And um, that was my former supervisor who, you know, I think is going to continue to be a great supporter of our program too. And the reality is in our world today, you need that. You have to have that. Yeah. It'd be nice to see those two teams join and maybe mm-hmm. we just start firing off emails to the ADs every day until they <laughs> get sick of me or block me or whatever. But that, that's a battle down the road. Um, mm-hmm. Yeah, big things coming to Philly. And obviously, 2025, Philadelphia is hosting NCAs. Again, yep. joint partnership with you guys in Drexel, Lily right up the street. Um, a lot of excitement coming, you know, almost pretty much the hotbed of wrestling, Philly area, Lehigh Valley. 
um, district three, New Jersey, you know, all that whole area there. Um, you know, what, what's, what's excitement like on campus? What's it like, you know, in the city and, you know, what, what, what are the latest uh, steps going on here? Sure. Yeah. I, we're super pumped to, to have it here in Philly next year. Uh, Drexel, we're so glad that they decided to partner with us to co-host this championship. Um, interestingly, I'm actually still on the NCAA championship committee, so I didn't select Philadelphia. That was before I got on the committee. Um, but I'm a part of the committee that's going to be, you know, helping kind of map out all the nuance of behind the scenes stuff. So I got a little bit of insight into kind of what the sausage making process looks like, um, which I think is going to be great for setting it up from a fan and student athlete experience standpoint too. Um, Kansas city set a high bar this year. I thought they did a really good job with the tournament that they hosted. Um, but we're excited and we think we can, we can, uh, keep up and surpass that to Wells Fargo center, Philly sports. They've been great partners with us as we work through this. Um, I think they have a great plan for how they're going to engage the city, how they're going to get people excited within the Philadelphia area about the championship. Um, it's going to be sold out. Tickets are going to go so insanely fast. Um, you know, I expect suites to be out in up for sale before too long, probably end of the summer at the latest. Um, you know, we're exploring fan fest options and where that's going to be lots of fun, cool ideas, some nuanced things for student athletes that I think will kind of elevate the experience. So, um, our goal is to put on an absolute first class top of line experience. Um, and then ideally have two Philly teams show out and show out in a big way at the tournament, which I think hopefully we'll get a lot of people excited. So I think we'll have huge Penn and Drexel following, which will be awesome for our guys out in the mat. Um, and I think it's just going to be a really fun, really cool experience. We hosted in 2011, the Xfinity Live didn't exist. Uh, live casino didn't exist. Oh, yeah. you know, I think there are a lot more benefits for our fans that they don't realize they're going to be right at their fingertips. Um, and we're trying to think about some cool, funky, unique things we can add to kind of elevate the experience too, which I think will be a, a, a really awesome piece of the puzzle for us. Yeah. Just make sure you talk to a, uh your director of ops cabin there. Cause I know he's always taking notes wherever he goes and you know, he's always tweeting it out. This will not happen uh -huh. in Philly in 2025, you know, uh -huh. like that, so. Oh, Hey, if, if Kevin's involved, like that working for you, it'll, it'll be, it'll be good. Oh yeah. If Kevin's involved, you better believe it's going to be a top class event. So, and yeah. he's involved. So we're going to yeah. make sure he, we, he won't put it out there if he doesn't think he can do it. And yeah. we're going to hold his feet to the fire on that one. And we'll, we'll make sure that we do it. Yeah. Um, that's pretty much all I had for Penn. I want to gotcha. shift a little bit to PRTC here. We got about five, six minutes left. Um, yeah. Obviously, trials just happened this past weekend. Um, mm -hmm. You know, Jody McKenna, uh, Olympic team member, which is all national team member, awesome for him. Just been kind of consistently in that second, third place, not quite getting that number one spot, but, you know, good guy to have in the room there. And, you know, Sad to say, Jordan Burroughs, you know, just didn't pan out like everyone was hoping, you know, mm -hmm. and the reception he got or lack thereof reception, whatever you want to say, not ideal either. Um, you know, and Mark Hall, like you said, kind of, re I kind of mentioned it, kind of retired, left his shoes on the mat there from competition. Um, so it looks like he's full force into coaching now. And I'm not sure how long you guys will have him on staff because I'm sure he's going to be a hot commodity, you know, moving in. Um you know, so just give me overall vibes of PRTC, yeah. how it's, you know, what it's like there in the room. Yeah. Um, you know, I, I think the best way to sum it up right now is it's it's bittersweet. Um, you know, we obviously had really high goals for these PRTC resident athletes. You put yeah. five guys in trials and I think going into the tournament, we were feeling good. You know, we had a shot at, at two, maybe three Olympians. Um, but that tournament, you know, we talk about the NCAA tournament being unforgiving. I mean, that tournament, that Olympic trials tournament is the ultimate. It, it just is four years of busting your butt. Uh, and you got to perform at one tournament to make sure you have a shot at performing one other tournament. Yeah. Um, you know, and we're proud of our guys. They got in there. They all battled. They all competed. Um, you know, we didn't get the results we wanted, but I don't think the process, if we went back and redid it, I don't know anybody would redo it. And I think at the end of the day, we can – sit back and be proud of what we built here and the people that we brought in and the culture and the environment that we've created within this PRTC. Um, you know, I, I would take these five guys plus Doug in our PRTC any day of the week. I wouldn't swap them out for anybody. Um, you know, they've gone, gone about it the right way. Obviously there was some, 
stuff that happened there. Um, and honestly, that's just highlighted who we are and what we're all about and, you know, how we approach what we do here. Like we, we, people matter to us and we're not going to be the people uh, um, who are putting down others, who are going to go after others. Like we're going to be with big hearts, strong hearts, character, and walk away with our heads held high. And, you know, there's not a single guy we sent to that trials that I feel like can walk away and say they didn't give their, their best and give full effort. And I think that's the most important thing at the end of the day. Um, you know, where things go from here, we'll see. Um, you know, we're going to take a deep breath, pause a little bit, let these guys digest. I mean, not accomplishing that goal after four plus years of dedication is, is heartbreaking and it's challenging and, you know, identities get shaken and it, it's really tough thing. So we want to let them digest and take their time and heal and recover and then circle back and see where we are. Um, and then we'll have a lot of questions about what we need to be thinking about going into the next cycle. But, you know, I, I don't think we're going to lose all of these guys. I think we're going to have guys who are excited about sticking around in whatever capacity that ends up being. And, you know, we're excited to work through that with these guys too, because they've had a huge impact on Penn and our Penn wrestlers here on the Drexel guys too. Uh, but they've had a big impact on our community too. And and that is what matters the most at the end of the day. Like, I, you know, I would take that over to an Olympian who's a, a turd who just, you know, doesn't treat people well. So, yeah. you know, it, it is bittersweet because we wanted more for them. They wanted more for themselves didn't accomplish that, but it doesn't take away from who they are and what they've contributed to us through the years. Yeah. And obviously we still have, you know, world championships coming up mm -hmm. in the same year as the Olympics. Um, any feedback on any of those guys that you kind of mentioned trying out for that team and making, making that team there? Yeah. I don't know that we have definitive answers yet. Yeah. Um, I think we've very intentionally been like, take some time. And then let's circle back and we'll go from there. Um, I don't think we're looking at retirement across the board. I'll tell you that. But, uh, you know, I, I think we are excited about who we think may be out there and looking at those trials, but TBD on who exactly that is and, and what that's going to look like. But um, we're excited to get to work with those guys on it. Yeah. Just, uh, you know, read between the lines here. It seems like JB is going to give a little more effort there and you don't have to confirm that, but just, me thinking no shoes were left on the mat. He still wants to compete. And the, the dude's a competitor, man, you know, won that world title on a broken ankle a few years, but was that decade ago now, but mm -hmm. yeah, it just shows how much he loves to compete, how, how he's willing to do whatever it takes to win. Right. So yeah. um, I feel like we'll see him back, but to be determined yet, which is still better than, than no. So yeah. That, yeah. That yeah. TBD on that one. I can tell you though, that I, I got to work with beacon last night and, if Jordan is to retire, I think Beacon's already ready to fill his shoes. <laughs> He's a little monster. He, you know, went through a full workout last night, climbed 10 ropes in the room, did 100 push-ups after practice. And I was like, all right, kid, you got it. So we got it. We got another Burroughs on the way before too long. Yeah, it's interesting. With six Olympic weights, the Burroughs family has five kids. You know, <laughs> one more, they can fill out a full lineup, right? You know, they're getting close. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, Coach, I mean, that, that's all I got here. We got a few <laughs> minutes left. Um open the floor to you, give some shout outs, thank yous that, you know, you want to send a little quick uh, recruiting pitch to Penn, you know, feel free to do that. I'll leave the floor yeah. up to you. Yeah. Appreciate that. Yeah. I mean, from a thank you standpoint, um, you know, I wouldn't be where I am today without my family, my wife and my kids, uh, you know, Kim and Jack and Teddy have been awesome. Yeah, I had my little guy in the room the other day. This is a family thing. So I'm excited to, to be back in the thick of it. Uh, obviously our AD, Alana Shanahan has been incredible in supporting us through this transition. And then our coaching staff here has just been awesome. Brian, uh, Mark, Roger, uh, Brandon, Doug Zaff has been helping out a bit too. So like this community has been incredible um, and just huge thank you to our alumni community and our PA, PRTC supporters too, and the Drexel staff and all they've done for us. Um, you know, we've done some big things here in Philly, but we have big things ahead. Um, our goals are still the same. And, you know, if you're a recruit considering Penn, you know, I hope you spend the time and take the time to understand who we are and what we're about and how we go about it. Um, Cause the process for us is as important as the result. And we're going about the process the right way. We're, we're going to have champions in this room soon. And we'd love to have guys who want to be a part of that process and are willing to put the time in and the effort in to be a part of that project at the end of the day. So big things ahead for Penn. We're pumped. 
All right. There you have it, Coach Matt Valenny. Thanks for joining me here. Appreciate the My time. Pleasure. I'll see you around and see at some of these matches here coming up. It's exciting stuff in Philly, like you said, and you know, it, 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 it's going to be fun. I'm looking forward to it. Thank you. Me too. Thanks for the time, Austin. Yeah, Appreciate it. Yeah.